And welcome to another edition of the Low Country Sports Report. I'm your host, Carla Fruza. And as always, I'm joined by Justin Jarrett. Justin, what's going on, man? Uh, just another another day in the life, living, living, uh, living the dream here in Beaufort County. Of course. So you must be pretty busy last week, you know, really busy week of sports and uh, especially baseball. You know, some big news coming out of baseball. Beaufort High School was able to claim the region title. And uh, what's been going on with it? Yeah, we thought that they might have to win at least two games against Colleton County to wrap it up, but they got a little bit of help. Uh, Bluffton High School knocking off Hilton Head High in the first game of their series. So that wraps it up for the Eagles with the win against Colleton County on Monday. Uh, their bats were a little quiet last week in a, in a couple non-region games, but they got it going again uh, against the Cougars in game one. And so now they can coast, uh, get their pitching rotation all set up for the postseason, and they should be looking pretty good going into the 4A playoffs. Yeah, throughout the whole season, man, they've looked so dominant. They're a great team. And, you know, besides from them, Skiza schools have been putting on great performances as well. You know, teams like Thomas Hayward and, then of course, Hilton Head Prep, who's been one of the better teams in the area. Yeah, they've come out of nowhere. Just one win last year, and again, we've, we've talked about it before, but the job Chris Wells has done there in his first season to go from one win to leading the region and, and really having a strong season, he's built up that program in just one year. It's going to be exciting to see where they go from here. Uh, narrow margin, though. They're only mm -hmm. a half game ahead of Thomas Hayward uh, as, we, as we record, and they've got a couple of games against each other coming up in the next couple of weeks, so it's going to go down to the wire there in Skiza. And then May River is trying to wrap up a, a – region championship as well. Uh, they were supposed to play Wade Hampton on Tuesday and Friday. They got rained out on Tuesday, so they're going to play Thursday, Friday. And uh, by the time you know we go to bed on Friday night, we'll know uh, who's the region champ in, in region uh, eight, three A. So uh, lots of exciting baseball teams around here. So I was able to catch up actually with the Hilton Head Prep boys baseball team. And uh, I talked to Chris and some other of his players. And you know, they really seem like they're going to do it this year. They seem like they're focused, they're determined. And it's amazing what Chris Wells did. You know, last year they weren't that great, but this year Chris Wells comes in and wow. Yeah, they've taken off. They really have. They've got some good pitching with uh, Luke Foley's had a great year, and they've got a lot of young kids who are swinging the bats well. And, you know, sometimes with a, a young team like that, you just need a little bit of confidence. They had a rough year last year with a lot of close losses, but uh, they were able to, you know, get that experience, and they came out swinging this year, having a great year. So we're going to go take you to Hilton Head Prep, and we're going to catch up with the Dolphins. You're watching Low Country Sports Report. Kind of new ground for me, you know, coming from the public school uh, level for, you know, almost two decades. Uh, so, you know, every, every team we play and every field we go to is kind of my first go around. So I lean on them as to kind of what to expect and who we're going to see and what kind of arms are, are going to be on the mound uh, any given night. I said we got a new coach. Um, our numbers are a little bit up from last year. Everybody's had a year to grow and mature. Um, had a young team last year. We're still young this year, but you know, everybody's a year older and more experienced. Well, considering last year we went one in 10, it's kind of a big difference to kind of turn the baseball program around. We're like eight and three right now. So it's been a good change. He's a little more strict than our last coach and he knows what he's doing. So it's a good transition. He's going smoothly. With Coach Wells being our new coach, it helps us because he has better strategy and uh, he has more of awareness from coaching for many years at Hilton Head. Well, yeah, the new Hilton Head has always done pretty well. They've had a couple kids that have made it to college D1 baseball. So, I mean, it's cool having someone that you know has turned kids' baseball careers into something great, having them coming over here. You know, I don't know if it's necessarily me. It's more of a we thing. Uh, you know, I don't think the credit's on me. It goes to the players. Uh, so, you know, some of these guys, it's their third coach in three years, so it's been an adjustment. Um, you know, we didn't really harp much on last year. We kind of focused on uh, what's in front of us. Um, and, and to their credit, they've uh, listened to the message and worked hard since day one. I'm um, really proud of them for that. And uh, we're, we're still a really, really young group. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we start eight underclassmen every night. Um, so uh, it's been a real team effort all year long. We all get along great. We have great, great team chemistry and everything. Um, so yeah, we all just go out there and compete at our highest level and do all we can to win, so. Yeah, winning is always great, but also I think just like the whole team we get along better than we did last year, knowing that we can win and play better as a team. It's, it's more fun, yeah. With this team, I mean, a lot of new guys uh, came around. We really we don't have like that many current players that came from two years ago. But this is a true family and probably one of the best families I've been a part of for any sport. 
I had a wonderful time catching up with those boys, but uh, JJ, I hope they have a great uh, end to their season. They're a really good group. But now let's move over to softball. Some <laughs> really interesting things happening with softball lately. Two no-hitters last week. Yeah, some teams that we uh, maybe don't talk about as much, some of them, but uh, Thomas Hayward has yep. had a great season. They kept rolling. Danielle Dudley with a no-hitter against John, awesome. Paul, John Paul II. Um, and then a team that we really don't talk about much, uh, Legacy Christian Academy, small school out in Jasper County. Uh, but they've got a great great pitcher Isabel Cannon and she threw a no hitter against Bridges Prep School here in Buford so uh, a couple of the smaller schools but they've got some talent as well and uh, yeah, we got we've talked about it a lot there's a lot of softball talent oh, some great this, talent in this area from the small schools all the way up um, speaking of which Buford High uh, keeping alive their region title hopes there they're still on the outside looking in against Compton County but they took the first game of that series if they can sweep the next two they'll be the region champs so uh, that's they've come a long way since dropping two out of three to Bluffton High School in their first series of the season so uh, Buford High looking like they they might be able to pull it off what do you think JJ is something that is making this softball the, the talent so good what do you think or is a result of that yeah I mean it, it's it's odd because if you look at it and if you talk with Matt Watts uh, he would tell you that our participation in, in the area in youth softball is very poor it's, exactly. it's way down um, but then you get up to the high school level and we've got a lot of, of solid teams um, it's kind of consolidated at certain schools though you know Battery Creek is is good May River solid uh, Buford High has done okay but, uh, but Bluffton has really fallen off in recent years. They're trying mm -hmm. to build that back up. They lost so much talent to May River. And, uh, and Hilton Head High has, has typically not been very strong in softball. Uh, Thomas Hayward's been good. Buford Academy just starting up their program again. So it's, it's kind of consolidated. Um, hopefully we can get more interest in the, in the it's younger It's a great sport. Groups. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I think USCB's success will help. You know, I think that will drive a little bit more uh, attention to the sport. Maybe some of these players will go to USCB. Yeah. Yeah, always a, always a chance. I mean, they've got a couple uh, local players on the roster already, so hopefully they'll bring in some more. But um, but we really just have to, to keep it where it is. We have to get more of the youth participation and um, you know in the rec leagues and, and then working their way up to the middle school and high school programs. Most definitely. But speaking of Matt Watts, we're going to take a quick little break, and then we're going to be joined by Matt Watts. You're watching Low Country Sports Report. Stay tuned. There's a smash to right field. That ball is way back. Gone, Nico Lang. So, Buford County, home run, shot over the right field. And welcome back to the Low Country Sports Report. Now, I'm joined by Matt Watts, Buford County Park and Rec Deputy Director. So, Matt, a lot of sports going on, a lot of uh, Park and Rec stuff last week. Um, just give us an update on spring sports yeah we just have a lot going on we actually ended our adult softball registration okay. for teams last week so just been doing a lot with that getting that organized but you know baseball and youth softball is doing really well both in Buford and Bluffton still waiting on our soccer and uh, flag football seasons to get going but everything else is running real smooth right now yeah, Justin Jarrett's very happy he tells me that his baseball team is undefeated <laughs> I don't know if he's lying I don't yeah. I mean I can't believe a team with Justin Jarrett as coaching would be undefeated right but yeah besides the point I think that has a lot to do with the players maybe <laughs> not so much with the coach no Justin does a great job he is really good with the kids so I can see why it has a good baseball team. Absolutely. So now let's go on to registration. Are there some deadlines we should be keeping in mind? We do have a few, like I spoke about with the team registration with okay. adult softball is over with, but the player registration is still going on. So games begin the week of April 22nd. Okay. So players have, you know, till then to make sure they're eligible to participate the first week. We do take registration for players up till May 3rd, just if teams need to add some, you know, a few more players to their right. team. But, um, you know, to get in by the the first games you probably need to be signed up by the 22nd but we also have you know our spring um, scoops lacrosse program for beginners you know that's still going on we have moved the dates to those I think some parents were concerned about having uh, spring break you know having to come out for the first clinic on spring break so we pushed it back a week so we actually extended registration until April 19th so parents still have a little time to, to um, sign up for that and then we're still signing up for our summer sports programs you know youth basketball and uh, high school boys lacrosse so 
that's still going on. We have a lot of always registering. It seems like we almost never stop, you know, taking registration for our uh, programs. How is the lacrosse been coming along? Have there been a lot of kids that have been signing up for it? Right now it is a little slow, but usually, you know, um, parents do wait a little longer. You know, when they hear that end of registration Absolutely. date, they kind of, you know, they know they have that time. And we usually send updates, um, email blasts. We put it on Facebook and whatnot on our page. So parents usually, they, they you know, know they'll hear about it. They'll hear about the end registration date before it comes. So they wait to the last minute. So hopefully it'll pick up here soon. You know, lacrosse is really one of those wonderful sports that I don't think get as much love as it should. I mean, it plays at some high schools, but I mean, it's not like it's not like a football. It's not like a baseball. It's not like a good a big name, but it's a great sport. I agree. And I mean, it, and it, it compared to with all the you know the volatile you know uh, you know talks I guess you could say going right. on with you know tackle and the the issues with safety. Absolutely. Lacrosse can be more of a physical game that doesn't have the much as much head impact as tackle football does. So it is good for more kids that want to you know they they want to have those contact sports, but it's not as full contact as uh, tackle football. And then too you know it's good for kids who have great eye, hand eye coordination with you know having their sticks and being able to catch the ball with it. But it's a fun game to watch. Oh, yes. I, I, I advise anybody to come out to see either Parks and Rec play or the high school teams play lacrosse. Now let's go into pools. We've talked about pools quite a bit the past couple weeks, but now briefly, where are you guys at with the pools? Do you still need more lifeguards? Yeah, we always need lifeguards. Um, you know, we, you know, between our lessons and um, all the activities we have going on at the indoor pools during the year, we're always needing new lifeguards because we have high school kids that come in and out dep um, depending on times of the year, along with college kids that may, you know, come in and out from time to time. But, you know, as you're well aware, we have the outdoor pool that, yep. you know, it's right around the corner when it's going to be open up on Memorial Day over at the Lynn Brown uh, Community Center. So we're looking for seasonal lifeguards, you know, mainly for, you know, summer use from um, uh, Memorial Day all the way until Labor Day. So we're looking for those. If anybody wants to, uh, to apply for it, please go to bcgov.net and, um, you know, we'll be happy to look into, you know, giving you a spot. That would definitely be a great opportunity for anybody who's looking to get some work. Mm -hmm. But uh, lastly, let's finish off on, uh, let's talk about an aspect of your facility. This week, we're going to talk about the skate park, and uh, I really think that's an aspect that separates you from so many other counties because not all counties have a skate park. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a really nice one, to, uh, something to do with Tony Hawk? Yeah, the, the, the skate park's been around at the Buckwalter Recreation Center for, you know, guys going on, I think, five years now. And at the beginning, Tony Hawk was really involved. They, um, you know, I wasn't here for that, but right. there was a lot of grant money that was um, provided from the Tony Hawk Foundation. And even when they had the grant opening, you know, Tony Hawk even came down wow. and visited. So it, it was a great event. I think there was, God, I want to say there was a thousand or two thousand people that came. There was a ton of people, as you're well aware of. I mean, Tony Hawk is the most popular skateboarder of all time. <laughs> But the, uh, this is a phenomenal skate park. As you know, a lot of skate parks around are, you know, because of money, they have to, you know, they put a concrete slab and they have some ramps and stuff. But that, you know, the maintenance on that is very tough and it's a very expensive. You know, our, our skate park is all in the ground. All the ramps are built into the, you know, the concrete. So it's something that, you know, you can use, you know, any kind of BMX biking on it. You can use, uh, you know, skateboards, rollerblades. We have all kind of different um, people that come out to use it for different things and I mean if you go out there any time of the day you're gonna find somebody out at the skate park it's one of our most utilized um, amenities in our parks that's amazing so glad that the kids have access to something that they enjoy and I mean to get you so it's worth the mind that it got put into it absolutely you're but right. Matt thank you so much for uh, coming on the show we're gonna take a quick little break but when we come back I'm gonna have Jody Vermilion on and we're gonna be doing some sand shark bites And welcome to Sand Shark Bites. And as always, I'm joined with Jody Vermilia. Jody, thanks for coming back. My pleasure, my friend. It's been a while. I know it has been a little bit. It seems like it's been ages, but uh, a lot of stuff has happened to USCB since yep. last time you've been on the show. And I'll uh, start off with have not too much for golf, but uh, men were in action. We can tell you about the Roadrunner Classic up in Rocky Face, Georgia. Uh, Jacob Thomas, who's a freshman, finished that tied for 10th. 
Yeah, Jacob Thomas, you know, Canadian boy. Um, him, Mark Sweeney, Bobby Dumphy, the Canadians have been on an absolute tear this year. And, you know, both the teams, the men and the women, they're gearing up for some big conference ch uh, championship action. Men are defending right. conference champions. So, you know, they both are excited for conference, but you honestly, they're ready for nationals. Nationals sure is where they want to go. Women and they want to win. Iowa, I believe, and the men play in Oklahoma. Is yeah, right? it's quite the travel. Yeah. So they're going to be taking some plane rides for sure. But uh, now let's switch over to a sport you're more familiar with and a sport that you commentate for, which is baseball. You know, baseball team has been showing a lot of positives lately, Joe, uh, Jody. Can you elaborate on it? They were on a roll. They'd won seven in a row, including two conference wins against Ave Maria. Then the rains came the on rains. Saturday. And they lost the final game of that series 4-3, to three, but only in six innings. The rains wiped out the last few innings. So that kind of interrupted the win streak, but still a lot of positives. Um, you know, Bam's got the guys. Bam was excited about having a, a totally healthy team, which hasn't happened at all this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. So I think that's contributed to the success. They've swung the bats well. They pitched well. Eamon Collins, as you know, threw a no-hitter against Trinity Baptist a couple weeks ago that down in Jacksonville. And he got the win in game one of the doubleheader against Ave Marie on that on that Friday. That's it's really good to right see. Now. It's really good to see because at the beginning of the season, you know, that team is really down on themselves. And, you know, they were totally underachieving. I mean, there's no way that a team like that should have been losing the way it the way they were. Right. So it's really good to see that they're making improvements. And, you know, it's going to better them for next year. Mm -hmm. These kids are getting some more confidence, and hopefully they'll take that. I mean, they pretty much have to win out to do anything with playoffs. I mean, it's possible, sure. but they're going have to have a lot of luck on their side but if they can keep this going into next year if they can have a bounce back year so let's talk now about a team that is having a very very good year and that's the softball team I mean we were talking before the show um, what should we mention and you're like where do we even where start? Do we start they're number 18 in the nation they swept uh, just recently um, uh, a conference doubleheader they are 33 and seven overall. They're 13 and five in conference, best record in the Sun Conference. They're trying to get that top seed for um, the conference championships mm -hmm. that start May 2nd. Uh, Bailey Wigness has done a heck of a job this year. First year as a head coach, and she's got that team, uh, you know, rounded into form. We got on the other side Kayla Boyle with her name all over the record book. She took over the all-time doubles lead from Mariah Sanborn recently, 47 doubles earlier in the season. She taken over the hit lead from Marissa Becker. She's on hits. a tear. I mean, she's no signs of slowing down. Maria Malasso recently threw a perfect game yeah. against Trinity Baptist a couple weeks ago at Sand Shark Park. Uh, she was nervous. She said it was a, it was a uh, run ruled game, five inning game. But she was nervous. She said her palms were sweaty. <laughs> I in bet. The, in the top of the fifth, getting those last three outs, but 15 up and 15 down from Malasso. So a perfect game in her. So she finds her name in the record book also. A lot of a lot of records going by the wayside this year with Team Eight. Absolutely, and you know, there's no true weakness on that team. I mean, they can hit, they can pitch, and one newcomer that has done wonders has been Sloan Ducey. Freshman. Honestly, I think she could win Sun Conference Pitcher she of the could. Year. She's, I mean, she's qualified enough. She's poised. Uh, she at one point this year, I haven't checked it recently, but at one point she had the best strikeout ratio per seven in the Sun Conference. That's amazing. I mean, just dominating, and her ERA was under one going into her last start. So, yeah, some good stuff coming from the softball side. It's yeah. fun to watch. You know, this is really cool because, yeah, we're having success now, and we're going to go to the playoffs and make a big run and uh, hopefully get into the World Series and all that. But the stuff that this is going to do for the program People want to come mm -hmm. to a school if you win. Sure. So, I mean, the amount of recruits that Bailey's going to be able to get in the future is going to be pretty good oh, yeah. because they want to go to a team that will win the Sun Conference and will be a top NEI contender, and that's what we have here, which is mm -hmm. it's amazing. San Sharks have been blessed because really all of their sp sports programs, men's and women's golf, mm -hmm. men's and women's track and field, softball, baseball, soccer, they've all enjoyed conference success and yeah, overall yeah. success. The baseball team, of course, back in 2012, made it to the NAIA World Series out in Lewiston, which was a huge thing in a you know, brand new program. So you know, those are things all to aspire to now, and I think uh, the future is very bright. Lastly, you want to mention some very quickly, some track and field dates we should keep in mind? April 27 and 28 is the uh, Sun Conference Outdoor Men's and Women's Track and Field Championships down in Savannah State. So keep those dates fresh. A lot of over 400 student athletes, support staff, uh, over 10 colleges from wow. around the Sun Conference will be descending on Savannah. USCB's hosting. It'll be a fun weekend. Should be a competitive weekend. Bernard Gaither's looking for the ladies to three-peat, the men to get back 
at Sun Conference Champs after finishing second last year. They won it in 2017. Yeah, that team's been on a tear. And, you know, Bernard Bernard wants it all, man. There's no There's no give up with him, man. He just wants to he win. He said in the last meeting, I can, leave, I can get you there. you gotta, you got to cross the finish line. Of course. Well, Jody, thank you so much Thanks for joining us today. Uh, very busy stretch coming up now, going into playoffs and all that fun stuff. And uh, if people want to keep up to date on USB News, where should they go? US, USCBAthletics.com. Awesome. Thanks, man. You've been watching the Low Country Sports Report. We're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, JJ will be back on with me. And welcome back to the Low Country Sports Report. JJ, this show is just flying by this week, but we still got some more great sports to talk about. And uh, let's get right into track and field. You know, Beaufort High School has just been incredible this year, and Dexter Ratliff has really uh, been, th you can thank him for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's been a group effort. They're, they're strong all the way around, but Dexter Ratliff is breaking records every week. Uh, and every week we talk about Buford High swept another team title. Uh, this time it was the Buford Track Classic, which has been around forever and ever. Uh, they, they kept the hardware at home. Boys and girls both winning the championship. May River second in both boys and girls. But Ratliff broke a 40-year-old record in the discus. That's the meat record. Uh, been around <laughs> since 1979. Uh, almost as long as me. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, Dexter, he's having an incredible year. I believe he's still ranked number one in 4A, so he's, he's favored to be the, uh, the state champ and uh, just having an incredible year. They're loaded. Their relays are, are killing it every week. Uh, Desmond Gaillard in the high jump is a monster. Uh, they got great pole vaulters. I mean, they've got it all. Right. Um, just a lot of talent in that program. Those guys really have to be some of the best pure athletes in oh, all of this sure. county, especially Ratliff. I mean, that kid, he's going to have a bright college future, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. He's a good football player as well, but, uh, I mean, nothing like the way he stays yeah. out on the track so, or in the field, I suppose. But, right. um, yeah, I think he's got a shot to, to go somewhere and do big things in college. Of course. So now let's go into a sport that's about to take over the entire county next week, and that is golf. We've got a lot of golf. It's not all heritage today. We're going to start off uh, with our home guy, Mr. Nimmer. Yeah, Bryson Nimmer does it again. He wins the Clemson Invitational in record-setting fashion. Uh, he set the school record for 54-hole tournament cool. score. Um, and he won for the fourth time in the 2018-19 season. He's having a which decent season. Is also a, a Clemson record. And again, as we've said before, uh, Clemson golf no slouch as far as history goes. They got a whole bunch of guys playing on the PGA Tour. So um, the records that he's breaking, the people whose records he's breaking, very impressive. And uh, I look forward to seeing what Bryson can do going into the NCAA's as well as uh, after he graduates and, and goes onto the professional ranks. He's got a bright future ahead. That's amazing. You know, that's probably the type of guy that we're going to see in the future at the Heritage. And I mean, for all of us, it's going to be really cool to say that we covered him in college and then we knew it was coming. And when he blows up, it's going to be no surprise. I covered him when he was about eight years oh, old wow. playing uh, local tennis tournaments way, way back in the day. A uh, little butterball. But uh, yeah, we have a good laugh about it every time I, I see funny. him. We talk about, you know, when uh, he was playing baseball, tennis, golf, everything. It wasn't really until he got a little bit older that golf kind of became the main sport. Baseball was his favorite as a kid, but um, just a great That's athlete. Really cool. Cool. Great, great kid, and uh, he's he's an easy one to root for. Of course. So now let's move on from one golfer to another. Let's give JT Herman of Hilton Head Prep some love. Yeah, Hilton Head Prep, Hilton Head Christian, both very strong this year. Uh, they the way they do their all region team is uh, in their region championship is they take the four region matches that they have and average out the scores, and it came within one stroke. Hilton Head Prep edged Hilton Head Christian by one stroke in the in the uh, average and JT Herman had the best scoring average of the bunch, which was under par, by the way. Um, so he's the region player of the year. Hilton Head prepped the region champs. But Hilton Head Christian, not to be outdone, they went to the Aner Blue Jacket Invitational this past weekend and went up against uh, a really strong field, mostly uh, public school teams, including Hilton Head High, which placed third. 
the Eagles, HHCA, ran away with it. And uh, J.D. Patterson, who another great local player with the individual championship. So, hey, we've got a bunch of high school golfers that are trying to be the next Bryson Nimmer, and we've got Bryson Nimmer who's trying to be the next PGA <laughs> Tour star. So we're, we're just a pipeline of golf talent here. Yeah, that's wonderful to see that local golf is being really strong, and it's giving athletes careers. You know, they're going to be able to make a lot of money and have a good life because of the sport. <laughs> but now let's talk about the professional side of it, and let's talk about the heritage. Yeah, I know you'll have a whole lot more heritage Oh, yeah, we're going to have a full-on heritage episode next week, everybody. So the whole show is going to be dedicated to the heritage. But we do a have a little bit of news. Uh, actually came in just before we, we started uh, filming that they gave out the final sponsors exemptions okay. for this year. And uh, another local guy, Mark Anderson, uh, one of them, a, a Buford boy, former Gamecock. Awesome. Uh, he'll be playing in the Heritage this year, which is great for him. He got a win on the Web.com tour earlier this year, got back on track after a couple years kind of scuffling out there. Um, so that really helped him get his footing. And uh, hopefully he can have a good showing here at home and, and uh, stick around for the weekend and make a paycheck and uh, another semi-local guy DJ Trahan uh, who lived on Hilton Head for a while okay. um, is trying to kind of make his way back after a few nice. tough years as well he's going to be playing in the Heritage too so a little bit of local flavor getting in there and then Luke Donald committed we were wondering a couple weeks ago if he was going to get in here because he has such a great track record at Harbor Town and uh, had not thrown his name in yet, but he has committed, so there's another one to consider for your picks next week. With Luke Donald, it's almost comical. He's literally finished second place in this tournament <laughs> five times. Five times. That's not an exaggeration. Who knows? Maybe this will be the year that he does it. You're too young to get the reference, but he's the Susan Lucci of Harbor Town. Yeah, I have no idea what that means, but hopefully my <laughs> viewers do. But Justin, thank you for joining us this week. It's been a wonderful show. We'll be back next week for a Heritage Golf Edition. You've been watching Low Country Sports Report. Take care. Hey, I'm Tony Hawk, and you're watching the County Channel. The County Channel is also available on video on demand. Go to bcgov.net, click on the County Channel logo, and select your program from the list. If you would like a DVD of this program, click DVD order form from the County Channel main page and fill out an order form.